One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the What's up guys, it's Arias here. And today I'm just gonna be going over another typical kind of weekly recap. I'm gonna talk about last week, um, what I think about is, or what I think is gonna happen uh, this week. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, I'm just gonna get right into it. So some of the current patterns that I've been seeing in this market, and this is what's kind of been happening a lot, is that we haven't really had a dead pre-market. Currently, we've been having kind of like these really strong pre-markets. We're having like six, seven stocks running in the pre-market. And, um, you know, things are just going crazy. So what we've really been seeing is like a really, really strong pre-market. Then I, I find like, and it, it didn't happen with uh, VCNX on Friday. But what I have been finding is that by the time we get to the open, these stocks have already exhausted themselves so much that when we do get that first sign of weakness, we just move completely to the downside because everyone just starts to sell, people start to panic, we get that kind of excess supply, and then we just kind of go back to where the stock came from, right? So we've been seeing a stronger pre-market. We, we have definitely been seeing two, two times where stocks are really, really, really strong. And number, number one is around nine o'clock, closer to the open, when we get uh, brokerages like Robinhood open up. Um, but I mean, I'm not really sure now, like before Robinhood was like very, very insane. At, at nine o'clock, we get all this volume. Now I find that's been kind of slowing down a little bit. But again, we've been getting a lot of volume closer to the open. And we've also been getting a lot of volume in the early, early morning at like seven o'clock in the morning market time. So nine market time and seven market time are two times where we, we, we have been getting a lot of kind of strength. Another thing is that the volume is still there. So, you know, sometimes if you're if you're a long trader, if you're a short trader, um, volume can scare you because, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, what is it going to do? It's so volatile. Things are going all over the place. But volume is your friend if you're a long trader because the more volume we have, the more demand we have. But that being said, if we get a massive death candle, then I'm probably not going to be interested in the stock because even though the stock is doing volume, you know, it, the technicals just aren't there for that stock to rip, right? You know, and another thing, it's very, very easy to overtrade in this market. Overtrading is, um, you know, something that can really kill your account. And it's one of those things where if you don't make enough on XYZ, then you try to make more on another and another and another you can really end up kind of blowing up and, and not really sticking to your strategy. And it's really, really easy to overtrade because there's so many things just running, right? Um, we might have six stocks running. You see one stock go up. You're like, oh, I can just chase this because chasing has been working in this market. And then all of a sudden you give back gains and then another one goes up and you chase that and you chase that too. That can be a really, really toxic, toxic, you know, thing to do. And especially when you're up in the morning, and I've, I've talked about this in my other videos too, but if you're up a lot in the morning and you feel like you really don't want to give any of that back, then you probably shouldn't put that at risk, right? And for me as a long trader, what I've been finding is that if we have a very, very slow pre-market, that's, that's a time where maybe at the open I'll say to myself, okay, um, you know, this really, this really might be able to, to start to move. Or maybe because shorts have been kind of, shorts have been kind of like having an active pre-market that we might we might have the longs kind of step in greedy shorts are forced to cover and we might get that move higher and you know everyone every single day is always like looking if you're a long looking for that one stock to just really really move and um i think it's just just really really important that like you just make sure that you're that you're just getting in at the at the best entries and and the best possible prices because if you're not then you're you're just putting yourself at risk for for bad habits when this market kind of starts to slow down. So for me, it's it's very very easy to give back gains. It's very very easy to overtrade. So every day you just need to um, just stick to your risk, not overtrade. 
Um, if you feel like you're up a lot, just walk away for the day. You know, that's the best thing. And another thing that I've been seeing is that if you're a short seller, you know, the, these moves have been going like insane to the upside, but also insane to the to the downside, right? And that's just kind of basic market fundamentals, right? The more people, the more over-exaggerated the moves are going to be, the more crazy the moves are going to be, the more volume, the more abnormal it's going to be. So you just need to remember that if you're a short seller, you know, just wait till the top is, is set, short the pops, and then leave it at that. If you're a long trader, you just can't, you must avoid the backside. If you see a death candle, any sign of weakness, you just can't, you can't be trying to go long that because there's been so many guys who are like, oh man, but I like to long backside bounces. But it's like, no man, like the odds are just not in your favor there. Like, like it, the market is such a trap where like when things aren't doing volume, you're always thinking like, oh man, like this is going to be the one, right? You feel like you almost have more control or you feel like because the stock is moving so slow that you almost are thinking to yourself, wow, like, like uh, maybe, and, and you see like a little burst of volume and you're like, wow, like this could be the next one. This could be the next one. This could be the next one. But the thing is, is that we need a lot of volume to move these stocks. So on these low volume tickers and on these ones where longs are are, are are stuck, you just got to avoid them and you just got to say, all right, this isn't this isn't my ticker. I got to move on, right? Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Um, these are just some quotes that I had that I really wanted to share real quick. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I, one big thing is that when shorts are reaching that max pain level, because no one wants to exit their position, right? You, you get in a, a trade at, at five bucks and the stock goes to 590 and you're like, ah. Oh, it, proper risk management would dictate that you should just get out at your risk, right? But you have to remember from the perspective of someone who is under PDT, from the perspective of someone who only has like those three day trades a week. I live in Canada, so like maybe I screwed that up, but I believe it is three. Like, I mean, I should know this, but I believe it is three. But, um, you know, someone who has like a little amount of trades each week, right? You know, they don't want to sell. Because they're like, oh man, like, oh, like that was my only trade, right? Like, man, I, I don't want to sell. And so, I mean, vice versa would go if you're if you're a short seller, um, you know, and, and again, this is just basic market fundamentals. But when we reach a max pain level on every side, where every side is ju just, you know, exhausted and just is forced to, to cover at a particular area or to sell at a particular area, that's usually when the stock is going to move up again. And that's usually when we've kind of like either cleaned out all the shorts and now we can move lower because all our natural bidders are gone. We've cleaned out the longs so we can move higher because all our natural sellers are gone. You know, those are what are kind of dictating the moves, right? When all shorts have covered and when all shorts are exhausted, there's no reason for you to be long anymore. And when all, and, and again, like this, this goes again, when, when all longs are kind of washed out or all longs are kind of forced to forced to sell, then maybe that is a time where you want to get long. I, I, and again, I, I'm always a little bit more cautious on the long piece because we could be backside and really, really far away from VWAP for that to happen. In my opinion, I would just rather, you know, and again, I've talked about this in, in previous videos as well. When we get that kind of volume, maybe over a, a level, and you know that a lot of shorts were forced to cover, and you know that you do need to kind of sell into that excitement and sell into that momentum. In those particular scenarios, I think that's where that kind of works very, very good and works and, and works best, right? And again, on this particular stock, on this particular day, we had this crazy emotional move higher. You could tell a lot of shorts had covered. And then all of a sudden we got that backside move, right? So, you know, and, and, and I said like that move was clearly super emotional. So I wonder if most shorts have covered and now we will get backside. And again, I'm not saying 
that that is a clear top indicator. You always wait for the backside, but we're always just going about it, painting the picture, trying to collect as much information as possible. And again, I, I just pointed out that the best longs were on the hot check, you know, and I, I said, I woke up late. I saw everyone talking about this stock. I was able to make money just, just purely based off of lines and just identifying the raw, right stock that I should be longing, right? And again, this is another thing that I just wanted to talk about briefly is that you can have an epic support line, a great support line, but if it's not a high volume stock and if it's not a hot chick stock, you have to leave it alone, right? Because more volume, more demand, stock should go higher. But if you have a great support line and we're really not doing a lot of volume and it's not a stock people want to be long and it's it's at kind of like maybe maybe near the lows or or it's a support line that no one really cares about and we're not doing much volume you should really really just avoid that stock right because the lines work but again like yes the lines work but we want to paint the picture with them as well right you can't be trying to to buy a support line on an illiquid kind of low volume stock you need to be buying the support line on the hot chick, the strong stocks, the ones that shorts are trapped, right? Again, um, you know, those are the the type of stocks that we want to be that we want to be longing, right? And um, a good way to gather information is the reaction on pops or dips. On the front side, we usually sip, see dips bought up quick, telling us shorts are in trouble. On the back side, we usually pop see pops sold off, telling us that longs are in trouble, right? So, and it's really, really funny, and I talked about this a video ago or so as well, where it's so funny how we never get that pullback that we want as a long trader on the front side because shorts are so stuck and our natural bidders are doing their job bidding on the way up, right? Same thing as long, by the time you get that backside dip, you know, it's not really, not really a long anymore, right? So that's something that I also wanted to say as well. Um, VWAP has been a massive indicator the past few months because of the amount of volume. When longs get trapped, the move to the downside has been crazy. When shorts get trapped, the move to the upside has been insane. VWAP can help sniff out who is trapped. And uh, Bao has mentioned this several times. I know Alex has talked about VWAP a lot as well. Tosh, all the mods. So again, you can use VWAP as a guide. The more volume, the more VWAP is going to help you because you know that there are a ton of participants and you know that once we're under VWAP, you know that one side is feeling the pain. Once we're over VWAP, you know another side is feeling the pain. So that's just like one thing you want to do. Again, our job is to collect information, um, you know, and, and again, like we knew the on SCKT, we knew the majority of volume was long bias. So what happened when they got trapped? We got our natural setter, sellers. We got our panics. We got those people on every single pop just, just selling. And, and again, the key to successful trading as a long trader is not to blow up on the backside. The key to successful trading at, or the key to successful long trading is not to, to blow up and fight on the backside. And the key to trading as a short trader is not to blow up and fight on the front side, right? It's so funny because on the front side, everyone's like, oh, I want to get that top tick. I want to get that top tick. And then on the back side, every, every long is like, oh, this should bounce. This should bounce. This should bounce. And it's that same kind of mentality of like, like on the front side, it's a bunch of shorts fighting each other. And on the back side, it's a bunch of longs fighting each other. And so like, if you just did the reverse and did the opposite and say, okay, I think shorts are really trapped here. I'm just going to go long. I think, I think longs are really trapped here. I'm just going to go short. You know, you have that kind of already that kind of supply and demand in your favor. And if you just kind of stop out over high day, or even as a long trader on that front side risk underneath that dip, then you're, you're great. Right? So thanks for watching guys. Um, I hope that kind of helps, um, you know, go over my kind of thought process and, uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next one. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.